Welcome to Autism Approved, brought to you by Enza Medica. Now here's your host, Kristen Selby Gonzalez. Hi everyone, and welcome to Autism Approved. I'm your host, Kristen Selby Gonzalez. Right now we are in Tampa, Florida, where the National Autism Association is having their yearly conference. And I am super delighted as we have one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Usman, who is here uh, gonna be able talking to us about dif different things about biomedical treatments. And uh, if you missed this conference or her presentation, be sure to check out www.nationalautismassociation.org. Welcome, Dr. Usman. Hey, thanks for having me, Kristen. I'm really excited because, you know, I remember seeing you speak years ago, and you just are so inspirational to so many parents out there and, you know, to other doctors as well. And I wanted to know, what inspired you to, I guess, go on this path and this journey with autism? I mean, that's a really deep question. I started out in a regular, you know, medicine, regular medical school, just like everybody else. I had my MD degree. I did my residency at Cook County Hospital in Chicago, Illinois, and I really wanted to help people. And I started seeing a lot of sick kids in my practice. And the kids were prescribed things that they would be on for the rest of their life, mm -hmm. things like Ritalin and asthma medication and allergy medication. And I started asking the question, why are so many kids sick, number one? Mm -hmm. And why aren't we treating what's causing the problems instead of just treating the like, symptoms? Like band-aiding the problems, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I was in family practice, and my whole practice was I was, I was prescribing antibiotics and antidepressants mm. and high blood pressure medicine, and I just, I just didn't want that to happen. And then my own kids started getting sick. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's been a long journey. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, in residency, I was pregnant with my first child, mm -hmm. so it was a very stressful time, and I didn't know a lot about healthy eating. You would think a medical, s a resident would know these things, mm -hmm. you know, getting sunshine, getting rest, um, taking my vitamins, wasn't the greatest at all of that, and I was pregnant during my residency first year and pregnant again my third year. Wow. Yeah, and my first daughter, had severe allergies. I remember she was wheezing when she was three months old, mm. and she wasn't glowing. She had the dark circles under her eyes, and she just did not look healthy. And I took her to the pediatrician. I said, my daughter's wheezing. My husband has asthma. Could she have asthma? And the pediatrician said, children under one don't get asthma. What? Wow. Mm -hmm. I never heard of that. I didn't either, and I, I thought, okay, you know, mm -hmm. you listen to your doctors, yeah. and even though I was a doctor, mm -hmm. you don't, it's not common to see little children wheezing like mm -hmm. that, so I just, you know, almost like they ignored me, and I said that she wouldn't sleep, she wouldn't eat, she would spit up all the time, mm. she had rashes all over her body and eczema, and she was wheezing, and she wasn't growing, and they, you know, they said that she would outgrow all that, and I just didn't feel comfortable with those answers. Mm -hmm. So I started searching for answers for my daughter's asthma and her allergy issues. And that's how I found my place in the world. Oh, wow. And, and basically, did you do things with diets? and? Um, yeah, so um, after my first daughter was diagnosed with asthma, and she had anaphylactic reactions to things like eggs and um, peanuts. Wow. My my second daughter was then diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Oh, my goodness. When she was 8 years old. Wow. And, you know, there's, again, no cure for type mm -hmm. 1 diabetes. They use insulin and dietary management. Mm -hmm. But my daughter also had allergies and asthma, my second wow. daughter. Well, that's the reason I was talking about diet, because I have asthma, and I know there's certain foods that I eat that it seems, and I don't know, but because no one's ever, you know, really correlated the two yeah. um, with me, but I know if I had dairy or different things like that, it seemed as though I'd have more flare-ups, and I'd get things like a more of a rash on my arms. Yep. Uh -huh. But what, what was so difficult for me is I was going to my attendings, I was going to my colleagues, and nobody ever mentioned to me things like food allergies. Really? Um, nobody ever mentioned to me things like immune dysfunction or immune deficiencies in mm -hmm. my children. Um, they, they put them on medicines to support the asthma and the allergies, but we didn't really look at some of the triggers, the possible triggers. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and my third daughter then was diagnosed with severe chemical sensitivities. Oh, my goodness. Anytime she would wear anything that was not 100% cotton, mm -hmm. her eyes would swell. And, again, the d doctors would give her drops for her eyes, but they didn't help me figure out, okay, what are the potential triggers? Mm -hmm. And for her, you know, we had to change our cleaning agents, our soaps, our shampoos. None of us could wear perfume around her as an infant. Uh, if we came near her, anybody hugged her or um, caressed her or held her on their shoulder, they had to have cotton on. My goodness, wow. Yeah. So you gr you've really had a journey. Yeah, and this, is, this started, you know, when my children were born, 1991. And how long have you been working with children on the spectrum now? Well, in um, 1997, I started um, part-time working at a clinic called the Pfeiffer Treatment Center, mm -hmm. and they were treating children with ADD, ADHD, using orthomolecular medicine, which is vitamin therapy. Okay. And I learned a little bit there, and Dr. Walsh there and I did some research on children in the autism spectrum, and we found out we did um, a study of 600 children, mm -hmm. and we looked at their copper to zinc ratio mm -hmm. and found that 99% of them had high copper and low zinc. Wow. Mm -hmm. And what, what would that look like, then, if somebody had high copper? Like, were they having um, and low zinc? Were there certain characteristics that each of those children were having? Like, were they doing similar stimming behaviors? Well, we weren't able to actually, quant you know, look at it from that perspective, uh -huh. but we we know what copper and zinc does in the body, mm -hmm. and zinc is very important for immune regulation. There's a lot of zinc in the hippocampus, which helps with memory uh -huh. and language. Wow, and, fascinating. And um, repetitive behaviors. So from that perspective, a low zinc level, zinc also helps with pepsin production mm -hmm. in the gut, so it helps with digestion. Wow. So again, folks with low zinc could have digestive issues, immune issues, and we think autism is an immune mm -hmm. immune issue. Well, you know, I have a little guy in the spectrum, and so I'm right there with you. I, I absolutely think that a lot of his issues go around the gut, and one thing that I know you talk about and with gut is fight or flight, mm -hmm. and how fight or flight affects children's digestive issues and the gut problems. Do you want to elaborate a little bit about that? Well, I think a lot of our kids' issues started very young, mm -hmm. whether in utero or very young in infancy. Mm -hmm. And it's it's almost kind of, it's almost like, you know, they had one stressor and then another stressor and then another stressor. And then a certain, you know, you hear this history from parents over and over and it's again. it's so similar, right? Yeah, you know, maybe the moms um, had an in vitro baby and they were exposed to certain drugs or some of our moms were on antidepressants and were oh. exposed to certain drugs during their pregnancy. Or some of our moms were um, rogue, you know, RH negative and received Rogam, which contains dimerosol. Mm -hmm. And then some of the babies, when they were born, they had issues like colic mm -hmm. and eczema and reflux. So then you kind of start seeing these patterns. And then they got ear infections and then were on antibiotics. And that further depleted the immune system and the gut flora, um, which is so important for a healthy immune system. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when we, we deliver our babies now, it's in such a sterile environment. And a lot of um, doctors think that that st sterile environment is preventing the immune system from developing naturally. Wow. Because we almost need to be exposed to mm -hmm. some of these, um, I guess, bacterias or other things that are in the air airborne type things. Because if you think about it, I'm thinking of my grandmother would always say, go out in the dirt and play. You need to go out on the dirt and play. You need to go on the grass. You need to be outside and think about all the different things that are outside, right? Exactly. They call that the hygiene hypothesis, that we're too hygienic. You know, everything's antibacterial. And we need that good bacteria in our gut, in our body, to help develop a normal immune response to things. So these sterile deliveries or C-section deliveries when the babies don't come through the canal mm -hmm. and don't get the good good bacteria. Mm -hmm. The way Mother Nature intended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or the, the babies that got antibiotics very early on. And then we're bombarded with antibiotics in our foods and hormones in our food. So you think about the way we were raised and the, the way um, what things we were exposed to, mm -hmm. and then you think about our parents, and you think about our grandparents. I mean, our kids are exposed to so many chemicals, so many agents that 
we were never really exposed to. And then the antibiotics and the hormones and the food supply. I mean, how many of us get fresh grown food straight from the garden. Yeah, I don't know anybody actually, unless I guess you live on a farm, which I don't know many people today that have that luxury. And I know when I'm thinking, and I was saying this earlier, to